This, as you may already recognize, is our home satellite, Earth. It's one of the eight planets in our solar system. Sorry, Pluto. But have you ever paused to think about the delicate balance that is our home planet's orbit? And is it really a circle like we see on almost every single solar system model we've ever seen? So in this video, I'm going to explain to you the answers to those questions and how aerospace engineers characterize orbits. In my last video, I explained to you what an orbit is and how it works. But in this video, we're going to dive a little bit deeper into how we define orbits and how we differentiate them from each other. In fact, this is an entire discipline of aerospace engineering known as orbital mechanics or astrodynamics. Orbital mechanics is the practical application of ballistics and celestial mechanics in the motion of rockets and spacecraft. In other words, this is how engineers use physics to calculate how to get places in space. And the way that spacecraft move in space is using different orbits to our advantage. Now orbits come in different shapes and sizes, but they're all elliptical, meaning that they're oval shaped. And for some planets, this elliptical path is almost perfectly circular. But for others, they look a lot more like long skinny ovals than a circle. The way that we define how circular or not circular these orbits are is with what's known as eccentricity. Eccentricity is just a measure of how circular these ellipses are. For instance, if the eccentricity of an orbit is zero, that means it's perfectly circular. Earth's eccentricity is 0 0.017, meaning that it's almost a perfect circle, but not quite. As I explained in my last video, an orbit is a delicate balance between velocity and the pull of gravity. It's entirely possible to balance this pull of gravity and the velocity of the satellite in a way that would make the orbital path circular. For instance, Venus has an eccentricity of 0 0.007, meaning it's even more circular than Earth's orbit. So now that we've discussed Earth's orbit around the sun, let's talk about Earth's rotation. Earth's orbit is not to be confused with Earth's rotation. Earth's orbit is the 365 day and a quarter path around the sun, while Earth's rotation is the 24 hour period it takes for Earth to spin on its axis. The next important characteristic about Earth's orbit around the sun is its axial tilt. Earth's axial tilt is at about 23.44 degrees. And believe it or not, if it weren't for this axial tilt, we would not have seasons as we know them. When we talk about the seasons, a lot of people think that the seasons are created because the Earth is closer to the sun at certain times of the year, when in reality, that has nothing to do with it. Uh, uh, uh. The real reason has to do with the angle with which sunlight hits the Earth at different times of the year. As the Earth orbits the Sun, the axial tilt is always pointed in one direction. Because of this, at certain times of the year, certain hemispheres get more direct sunlight. And this more direct sunlight obviously makes the temperature go up. For instance, at this point in Earth's orbit, the northern hemisphere is more exposed to direct sunlight. However, when Earth gets to the other side of its orbit, the southern hemisphere is getting more direct sunlight, and therefore it's summer in the southern hemisphere while it's winter in the northern hemisphere. So the relative distance of the sun really doesn't change that much between the seasons. Now you've got it. So now that we've talked about Earth's orbit around the sun, its rotation, and its axial tilt, let's talk about Earth's own satellites. There are three main types of Earth orbits that we utilize for launching our artificial satellites into orbit around the Earth. There's high Earth orbit, medium Earth orbit, and low Earth orbit. And as you may have guessed, low Earth orbit is the lowest. You smart. Low Earth orbit also happens to be the most common orbit. Satellites in low Earth orbit can be anywhere from 180 kilometers to about 2,000 kilometers. Or translated into American, it's about 100 miles to 1,200 miles high. Now there's a lot of different reasons why low Earth orbit is the most common orbit. The first and probably most obvious is that it's the lowest orbit. It's the easiest to get to and it's the cheapest. Another reason that satellites are so commonly found in this orbit is because they can provide a high bandwidth and relatively low communication latency. Not only that, but a low Earth orbit requires less powerful amplifiers to transmit data from low Earth orbit to the Earth. That being said, there are several disadvantages to low Earth orbit. For instance, there's a much smaller field of vision than you would get from a higher orbit. This is due to the fact that it's lower, so it doesn't have as high of a vantage point to increase its field of vision. 
Another disadvantage of this orbit is the fact that it can't reach quite as far, again, because of that low vantage point. So in other words, if you were to have a satellite in low Earth orbit and you wanted to transmit all over the world, it would require a constellation of satellites in order to accomplish this. Another disadvantage of low Earth orbit is the fact that low Earth orbit satellites often suffer from orbital decay faster than higher orbits would. In order to compensate for this, these satellites have to go through periodic reboosting in order for them to keep on their orbital path, or they'll eventually fall out of the orbit and burn up in the atmosphere and have to be replaced, which is incredibly expensive. So some examples of some satellites you can find in low Earth orbit include the International Space Station, and in fact, all the space stations were all in low Earth orbit, communication satellites, spy or surveillance satellites because they're lower to the earth and can observe better and some communication satellites as well. Satellites in mid-earth orbit or middle earth orbit include navigation satellites and satellites that are meant to monitor specific regions of the earth. The altitude of middle earth orbit is from about 1200 miles above the earth's surface to 22,000 miles above earth's surface. High earth orbit and geosynchronous orbits are from 22,000 miles and above. Satellites in high Earth orbit include weather satellites, navigation satellites, and some communication satellites too. Probably the main advantage of high Earth orbit is the ability to do what's known as a geosynchronous orbit. A geosynchronous orbit is an orbit around the Earth that takes exactly 24 hours. In other words, this satellite exactly matches the rotation of the Earth. This allows the satellite to sync to a geographical location on the Earth in order to monitor a very specific region from an incredibly high vantage point. And that's exactly why navigation satellites, weather satellites, and some communication satellites use a geosynchronous orbit because they only need to monitor specific regions of the Earth and they have a wide field of vision to do so. So if you learned something new about orbital mechanics today, please like the video. And if you want to continue to learn more about space and aircraft from an aerospace engineer, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching and Godspeed.